weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it Same God never fails, will not 
not fail me now oh, He won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out He's working all things out yeah. Oh yes I will lift you high In the lowest valley Hey, City Center Church, man, so glad that you are with us today. I don't know about you, but that was some great worship and a great way to kick off the new year. So happy new year. No matter where you are, if you're in Bethlehem, Lehigh Valley area, I want to say happy, happy, happy new year to you. If you're here in Berkeley or the Bay Area, happy new year. If you're in Arenda, like wherever you are, I just want to say happy new year. And as I said last week, I'm believing that God has some great things in store for you personally, spiritually, when it comes to our church and when it comes to the future habits and the future people God is making us into. Man, we are committed, as I said last week, to rethinking what church has always been about in order for us to be open to saying, God, would you help us rediscover your heart for our lives, your heart for our families, and your heart for our cities. Man, no matter where you are, I believe God is up to amazing things. And it's when we move from the mindset of wanting things to be different to being willing to actually allow ourselves and push ourselves to take the next steps. Today, uh, the title for our message is, I want to grow spiritually. And we're going to jump more into that. But as we know, we're in this new series and the purpose for today is strong faith is built up every day with Jesus. When you think about the willingness and even the dreaming of what you want one day and where you feel like you're being taken, man, that the starting place, the foundation of any growth, any movement, anything good in our lives is having strong faith that's built on everyday relationship with Jesus. How? That's creating daily. Come on, if you're listening in, tap the person next to you or put it in the comments or write it in your notes. But it's created by daily habits of reading and prayer. Why is this important? Because my prayer life helps me grow personally. My prayer life helps me grow relationally and it helps our church uh, to move forward. I wanted to give you just a quick recap. If you missed last week, I want to encourage you, go back and watch it. But last week we started with this understanding that only 8% of people who set resolutions, goals, uh, dreams for life actually 
accomplish them. So that means that 92% of people are in the place of wasting time or wanting things that they're not willing to take actions to accomplish, right? We said the three reasons are you're in the wasting zone, you're in the wanting zone, you're in the willing. And my main point last week was that the life that will do is more successful than the life that wants to. Come on, we all know this, that talk is cheap and so many times we find or we're around people or it's us where we are wanting to do things, but we're not willing to make the change. So how do we move from just wanting change to being willing to actually change? And I said last week that you have to grow past the one day, right? So many times in our lives, we, we keep dreaming, one day I'll get married. One day I'll be financially secure. One day I'll be out of debt. One day my marriage will be healthier. One day, one day, one day. But you have to grow past the perspective of one day. And then I said, you've got to pick when you will start day one. See, those who've moved past just the, the, the vision of one day got to a place where they chose day one. And I hope that as we go through this, this journey of choosing day one, that we believe that in order for you to grow in all of the areas you're looking for, financially, spiritually, uh, relationally, in your career, like all of those things start with the foundation of Jesus. And that day one is that today, that how do I grow spiritually? And then we said this last week, if one day never has a day one, then call it what it really is, which is what? Never. If your one day never has a day one, just call it what it is, which is never. But today I believe is a day for your day one. Today is a day where we say, okay, how do, what do we, what's our first step to making 2023 the best year ever? And it starts with day one. And day one is our title. How do I grow spiritually? I want to grow spiritually, but am I willing to do it? So here's my main question. How would your life be better in your inner life if your inner life was stronger? I'll say it again. How would your life be better? All the things that externally people can see if your inner life, emotionally, spiritually, your mind, your body was stronger. Let me ask it another way. How would it help you face the inevitable challenges in the years ahead? How could that help you to stand your ground when the pressure of life and the anxiety of decisions and things that you need rise up? How would um, who, who you are today look different tomorrow if you worked hard to make your inner person stronger? Who wouldn't have uh, to have a more powerful, like who would not want to have a more powerful inner self, inner spiritual self? I want to encourage you today that we have to move from wanting it to the action step of actually experiencing it. So here's my main point for you today. As you're sitting there and it's a new year and, you know, wherever you're at, maybe it's warm where you are or cold or maybe you have snow or maybe you're with family members or maybe you're by yourself at this moment. Here's my main point for you today. Some lives will make progress and other lives will make regrets. I'll say it again. As we look at this this new year that we're walking into, that we're in now, right? 2023, and we're talking about growth, and we're talking about being the eight percenters. The main point is that some lives will make progress and others will make regret. And the question is, which one are you going to be? One that makes progress or one that makes regrets? What's most important? Making progress in life is catapulted. Man, if you want to make progress in life, it's catapulted by making progress spiritually. Man, we know that if you will make progress spiritually, if you will focus and hone in on the right foundation, your life, your future, your impact, your growth will be catapulted. Some are thinking, right now. You're sitting back and you're like, holy than now. You're like, man, I got this, right? You're thinking, hey, I know what you mean, Ray. I know what you're saying because you're more concerned with thoughts 
and intuition and traditions, right? You're leveraging some practices that helps you through your hard emotions or you're open and curious about uh, philosophical and extraordinary com uh, concepts. Your reliance is on assumptions that life will end up okay no matter what. And here's the interesting thing about all of those things. Jesus said something different. As we look at making progress in life, as we look at growing spiritually so that the rest of our lives can be catapulted, Jesus said something a little bit different about that. He said, every human is spiritual because there's something eternal about each of us. Every human is spiritual. There's something eternal about all of us. So we have to start there. And he also said that you, that you grow spiritually, spiritually, not just by hoping, not just by wanting, not just by saying, oh, I'm going to grow spiritually. But it's actually by creating a lifestyle of faith. Last week we talked about in James where James said, hey, faith without works is dead. And, but here's the thing. If you will make the decision to, to stop just hoping and creating a lifestyle of faith, here's what you have to know. The benefits are massive. Come on, hit your neighbor. Man, when you choose to start creating a lifestyle of faith, the benefits are massive. They're huge. Listen, you get all access pass to God forever. Come on, some of us are like, man, I want all access pass to the Steelers, right? Some of you are like, Ugh. all right, the Giants, the Eagles for, for Pastor Nate. Like, man, we want all access passes to the Warriors, to so all of these things. But when you choose to, to have a lifestyle of faith, you get all access pass to God forever. It doesn't stop there. You get uninterrupted hope and resolve. Come on, I want that. And here's the coolest thing. When you start creating a lifestyle of faith, your prayers actually work. Why? Because you start praying in God's will. You start the things that you begin to ask for have to do with spiritual growth. It has to do with impact. It has to do with not being selfish, but caring for others. And they begin to work. Look at Matthew 17, 20. It says this, Jesus speaking. He says, truly, come on, if you need anything else, he's saying, truly, I tell you, if you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, he says, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Man, I would encourage you, creating a lifestyle of faith has massive implications that allow you to be more financially, uh, more relationally, more mind, purity, anxiety, stress, all of those things look different when you begin to live a lifestyle of faith. Faith is transformative. Faith offers you hope. Faith, when connected to actions and deeds, your life progresses. Faith changes lives. Faith heals marriages. Faith provides hope. Faith brings down villains and breaks addictions. That is faith. Faith, small as a mustard seed, has the power to move mountains. Nothing is impossible for those who have faith. As we look at spiritual growth, so the question is, so how do we, how do we grow spiritually to witness the miracles in our lives? How do we move from wanting to grow spiritually to willing to grow spiritually so that we can see the miraculous happen in our lives? Because this is the starting place. Day one is a passion to move from wanting to willing to grow spiritually every day. It's different than what we're used to. We have been told that it's something you feel your way through. That spiritual growth is something that you just begin to feel your way through. What does it feel like? How does it work? How does it make me feel? What can I take and not take? 
but it actually, spiritual growth is actually something that you choose your way through. That even when your feelings may betray you, oh, Obi-Wan, right? Come on, you all know that, right? When your feelings don't want to do the things you need to do, which happens all the time, our feelings keep us from accomplishing our goals. It's when we choose our way through that the impossible becomes possible. Here's the truth. There's lots of mystery around the spiritual life. Come on, wouldn't you agree? There's lots of mystery, lots of different perspectives, lots of things that we just don't understand. But here's the cool thing. Jesus did not want us to, re- for, Jesus did not want it to remain a mystery. He didn't. Here's what you have to understand. He wanted us to know how to get the miracle working power of God's spirit. Jesus's desire was to like, man, how do I help you get the miracle working power of God that when you have faith, you can see actions happening in your life and in the lives of other. You have to be the person willing to grow spiritually instead of wishing. Man, if we remove the mystery, you have to move from the person that's just desiring and envisioning and wanting to grow spiritually to actually making it happen. And here's the cool thing. I love how Jesus simplifies things that are so complicated. Jesus really clarifies what the power of the Spirit is and how to get it with his most famous message, which is this, strong faith is built up with Jesus every day. I want you to know that if you wanna grow in your faith, it is found and built up with Jesus every day. He calls us to himself and you hear it in this message that we're gonna read through in Matthew chapter seven, where Jesus is speaking about there's a connection to him and when you're connected and when he's your foundation, all other things are easy. Not easy because you're doing it, easy because you're giving up control to God. Man, I promise you if in 2023, you make a decision to give up control to God. You give him all access to everything that you are and you allow your life to desire to to, to grow spiritually, that your day one today is all about giving up control and growing spiritually. Nothing will be impossible for you. So what does this look like? Let's read Matthew chapter seven verse 29 and 20, 21 through 29. It says this, it says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, he says, will enter, enter the kingdom of heaven. He says, only those who actually, come on, only those who actually do the will of my father in heaven will enter. He says this in verse 22, he says, On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miraculous, many miracles in your name. But he says this in verse 23, but I will reply, I never knew you. If I pause there and I say, man, what does it look like to, 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 strong, to build up strong faith with Jesus every day? It's, it's in the place of being near Jesus. It's in the place of being close to Jesus. He wants to know us. And so he goes on, get away from me, he says, you who break God's law. And he goes on, anyone who listens, he says, to my teachings and follows it is wise. Listen now, he's, he's explaining how do we grow spiritually. Uh, anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid fo- rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it says it won't collapse. Come on, as you think about your life, and you think about, man, how do I, how do I continue to grow and move forward in all the areas of my life? It's, it's telling you here, you gotta have the right foundation so that the things you're building, right? When your inner person, your inner spiritual person is built up, then everything that goes on top of it is more solid and sturdy. He says it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. 
He says this, but anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is foolish. He says, like a person who builds a house on sand when the rains and the floods come and the, the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Verse 28, he says this, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. He says this, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious lore, law. As I move into our next steps here and uh, give you a few points uh, and then pray us out, as today is day one of the one day, the vision of where we want to see us going in 2023, today is day one. We have to start with growing spiritually. Allow me to pray for, for us and I'll give you guys some points. And so God, I thank you for today. God, I pray that as, our, as we're moving to a place, God, where our one days become day ones. God, I pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear all the things you want to say and speak to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's what you have to understand. In order to move from wanting to grow spiritually to willing to grow spiritually, there's four things I want to encourage you to do. The first thing is this, our words must be tied to our actions. You see in this passage where, where Jesus is talking about, he says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. What is he saying? Talk is cheap, come on. If you're just wanting to make a change, but you're not willing to do it, you're missing out, so your words have to put into action what the teachings is trying to say. So, so the encouragement is, that, man, if you want to be pure, but you're not willing to, whatever that is for you, you want to be pure, but you're not willing to do this. Maybe for you, you want your relationships to be healthy, but you're not willing to change this. Or, hey, I want my debt to be free, but I keep doing this. Or I want to grow spiritually, but I won't follow Jesus every day and I'm not willing to give up, right? Then our words are not tied to our actions. We are just speaking sweet things without doing the things we have to do every day to see a change. So in order to move from wanting to grow spiritually to willing to grow spiritually, your words must be tied to your actions. They must be connected. They can't be different. Number two is this, that if you want to move from wanting to grow spiritually to willing to grow spiritually, then our actions must be directed by Jesus in his teachings. If you want to grow spiritually, it's no longer you living your life the way you want to live it because the foundation has to be built on the blueprint that Jesus already created. And the starting place for having a life that builds into becoming what you've always wanted it to be, you have to start with the right foundation, which is the words, the life, the teachings of Jesus. How do we do that? Number one, spend time with Jesus daily. I promise you, it's one of the, the things that I do on a consistent basis is making sure that I'm spending time with Jesus. And here's why. He will remind you of your identity. Man, when you're walking through life and you're anxious or you're depressed or you're stressed or you don't feel good enough or your relationships are not going the way you want it or your career is not going where you want it or the action steps you want to take are not being accomplished, Jesus will remind you of your identity. He will remind you of where your hope is and who you hope in. Spend time with Jesus daily. Number two is this, that you have to both read the word and apply the word. Come on, read and apply the Bible on a daily basis. Why? So that you know you're heading in the right direction. 
Man, as you're thinking about making decisions and plans and, and how you should grow, when you're growing spiritually, when you're spending time with Jesus and reading his word, then he actually begins to direct you on what to pray for and what your goals should be. And then you just start building and building and building. And that chasm that we talked about last week between where you are today and where you want to go gets smaller and smaller because now the foundation and your help and the power of God working in and through through you helps you to continue to grow and you can throw off those impurities you can throw off uh, those addictions you can throw off the laziness you can throw off the wanting and the not willing the faith without actions you get to throw those things off so spend time with Jesus daily read your word uh, and apply it every day and then lastly get into relationships that sharpen you man choose the right relationships. Because here's what you have to understand. When you have those right relationships, you're supported in times of need and weakness. Man, when there's storms that are raging all around you and you don't know how you're gonna make it, man, and you're trying to continue to apply Jesus's teachings, but it's hard. When you've got the right people in your corner encouraging and challenging and sharpening you, man, life looks different. So, man, how do we move from wanting to grow spiritually to um, willing to grow spiritually? Our words must be tied to our actions. Our actions must be directed by Jesus' teachings. Number three, our trust must be in Jesus' words about the Spirit's power. There is power in God's Spirit. And when you're connected to Jesus every day, Right? You, have, you begin and you learn how to put your trust, you learn how to put your hope in God's Spirit and in the, in the Spirit's power. Here's just a few words about the Spirit's power. Perseverance, joy, love, and discernment. Man, when you put your hope and your trust in the Spirit's power, you have perseverance when anybody else would give up. Man, when anybody else would give up, when the storm is raging, when you are trusting in the Spirit's power, you will persevere in areas where other people did not. That those in the 92% who give up, man, you're in that 8% that say, man, I am empowered by the Spirit of God that daily I'm seeking His faith, face and I know that I can persevere even when it's hard. Number two is this, that the Spirit will give you joy when everybody else would be devastated. When everyone else is devastated, you are joyful because you know whose you are and you know who's got your back. Number three, love. Man, you love when anybody else would despise. Man, when people do bad things against you, you're still loving. When things aren't going exactly the way you want them to be, you're still loving. When, when maybe in a relationship, someone does something bad against you, you're like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep love because I've got Jesus and the Spirit's power working in and through me. And the last one here, man, when we're talking about how do we, that we put our trust, uh, our trust must be in Jesus's words about the Spirit's power. We have incredible discernment. That was good. Incredible discernment when anybody else seems confused and scattered and lost. A lot of times when people are trying to move from wanting to willing, you don't have the discernment to know what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And when you've got the Spirit's power working in you, when you're trusting in the Spirit's power, you have incredible discernment when anybody else seems confused and scattered and lost. And lastly, to so get ready to close. Number four is this, that if you wanna move from wanting to grow spiritually to willing to grow spiritually, our foundation must be on Jesus and not ourselves. But after you've chosen the right foundation, I wanna encourage you today, if you will be willing to choose the right foundation, you have one choice that separates strong lives from vulnerable lives. As we think about the future and where we're going in 2023, the wanting and the willing, there's one choice that will separate you becoming strong in your life or vulnerable in your life. Well, one choice you must make repeatedly. It's interesting when Jesus said, your faith can move a mountain, that passage, it wasn't just a figurative things that he was saying, but he was actually pointing to a specific mountain. Jesus points to two hills that, were, that used to be about the same height. Then around 37 BC, Herod 
wants his fortress higher than anyone else. So he had this vision, right? He had this wanting and the, for him, the willing was to, to cut the top off the hill and to add it to the next one. They literally moved a mountain. Now to Herod, Herod that impossible, the impossible was done with one command. But here's what you have to understand for the people who actually did it, who actually made the change, who actually were willing to see the impossible or helping to make the impossible possible. The impossible was done bucket by bucket by bucket by bucket over time. And what we have to do today is choose a practice before we need the power. So many times we wait until the addiction destroys us or to the impurity breaks the relationship or et cetera, on and on and on. We allow the negative things to control us and we're not willing to make the change until it becomes catastrophic. But when we're willing to choose a habit way before we need it, before we need the power, then we can see spiritual growth truly happen in our lives. So here's a few quick next steps. Number one, make Jesus your foundation today. When you make Jesus your foundation, nothing's impossible. Number two, I want to encourage you, find a friend to be honest with about what you're dealing with. Number three, stop a relationship you should not be in. I feel like there's someone here that you're in a relationship that you know you shouldn't be in it. Stop it today. And lastly, make spiritual growth a priority every single day. When you pray with me, God, I thank you for today. And I pray that as we go through the rest of our year at the start at our day one today that we would make spiritual growth our priority father we give you all praise and all honor it's in jesus name we pray amen man i can't wait to see you guys next week if you're in the lehigh valley area we're kicking off in person on january 8th and if you're here in the uh, bay area man we're kicking off weekly gatherings january 8th you don't want to miss it we'll see you guys next week